I ain't got my goggles on. <clears throat> you need them more than I do. That reminds <laughs> me, I need to ask you something about your machining workshop later. Okay. Um, when you split out strips of bamboo, if you ever get one that's perfectly straight, thank your lucky stars, because it doesn't happen very, very often. They have a rather significant, they have a rather significant bend. And You can see the bend in this one, can't you? Mm -hmm. okay. right. Harry, do you have that so that the enamel is on top now? The enamel is towards me. Towards you, okay. Okay. The enamel is, my thumbs are on the enamel. Got it. Um, there are several little things that I use. I forgot my vise. I don't use a big vise like this for straightening. <laughs> I use a three inch drill press vise. And I took a piece of uh, half inch aluminum angle iron and cut it off the length of the, the width of the jaws and just I used double sided tape and taped it to my jaws. Now I've got smooth jaws on my machine. Okay. That way this has serrated jaws and I will definitely put the serration into this before we're over. So you're going to have to use your imagination a little bit. Um, when I straighten I split all my strips. I don't do any band sawing of my strips. I do cut them the length first before I start straightening them because if I'm not going to use this end of the rod, why do I want to straighten these nodes? Am I making sense? I do all of my heating with a $30 Wagner heat gun. It has 115 rods in it. Knock on wood. I, it may go out before the demo's over today. If it does, I'll have to bum a heat gun off somebody. Um, it did not come with a fishtail nozzle like this. I went to the local electrical supply house, the place where the contractors go to buy wire. I'm not talking Lowe's or Home Depot, where a real live electrician goes to buy stuff to wire a house. They have hundreds of heat guns and attachments, where they use these to do heat shrink tubing around the wiring. And I found a, a fishtail nozzle that had a half lip here. This one did. And I cut it off with a Dremel tool cut off wheel and ground it smooth. And used a, uh, what do you call these days? Hose clamp. Well, there's a better name for them than a hose clamp, but <laughs> I used the hose clamp. <laughs> That's what I always told. Uh, I used high tech duct tape, all right, to put it to put it uh, uh, on here, and I had to cut two little slits to make it fit, but it works out. And like I say, I've I've got 100, and nearly 120 rods in this particular setup. I always heat it on high, okay, and I don't worry about scorching the enamel. I used to soak my strips, but I don't soak them anymore. The reason is you really need to soak them three or four days before you start heat treating them. And I never knew exactly when three or four days before I was going to start working nodes was going to be. So I've just taught myself to uh, straighten while the strips are dry. People say, don't you worry about burning, the scorching the enamel side or the pith side and my answer is just don't scorch them okay if you scorched them you got it too hot <laughs> all right um, I, I mean that's i remember several years ago on the rod makers list somebody said how much scorching is okay when you're straightening nodes and john simley said none zero well kind of made me mad because i thought it was okay to scorch them a little bit um, and then I figured out he was right. If you're scorching it, you're damaging it somehow or another. You know, I don't know how to explain what the damage is. Some of you engineering types can explain that, but it's 
it's not the same when it gets finished as it was when it started. So I don't scorch it. I just get it hot. And with a huge bin like this, I'll show you two or three tricks for getting this bin out. First, let me say, you can see obviously the bin this way. I'm not so sure you can see that once I get this bin out, I'll have an S shape or a W shaped bin in there and I'll have to get both of those out. I only know that because I put this bin in there a minute ago. Okay. This little foot switch down here is a wonderful thing. My shop is six feet by 20 feet and a heat gun will get it hot in there in a hurry. So I want to run this thing as little as possible. And I'm just going to heat this until it gets soft. How do I know when it's soft? Well, it start to bend. And is that brain surgery or what? It's rocket science. No, he's a rocket, rocket surgery. <laughs> rocket, rocket surgery. Yeah. Rocket, rocket surgery. Rocket surgery. Yeah. <laughs> the only problem with this old heat gun, it takes it about a minute and a half before it begins to heat up. So on the second note, it'll take me a lot less time. With this wind blowing, it'll take even more time. But the second note will take me a lot less time to heat up than the first note. Now, here's a trick. Watch what I do here, okay? It's hot enough to be in. So I got that out. Okay? Just bending it against the nozzle of that heat gun. You can thank George Maurer for that little tip. That's one thing that I got from George that I'll be eternally grateful for. You might see, I don't know if you guys can see or not, you see the little dip here? It actually comes in going this way, goes down, back up, down, back up. So I'll have to get those two out. To do that, I use John Long's little Bill Warren node press. That's $40 or 45 or whatever it costs that I ever spent on <coughs> rod making is right here. And it has saved me hours of heartache. Get this hot again. Press that side out. got to deal with another bump. Okay. As I say, I use a three inch machinist vise, drill press vise. I'll heat it a few more seconds after I've got it straight. Close that vise down for me a little bit, please. <coughs> Come over here and I'm going to act like this was my vise. The enamel side is going against one jaw. And if this was my vise, Okay. Now, I've, I've, that's way harder than I need to squeeze it with this big vise, which has a serious mechanical advantage. That little drill press vise doesn't have near the mechanical advantage that this one does. And uh, it's flat as a flitter. Who? Flitter. That's kind of flitzy. Ah, it's kind of what? It's kind of flitzy. I like that. <laughs> that's one of those Cajun colloquial ones. Right? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I can't help it if you folks don't, you folks don't, don't speak good southern. Southern. <laughs> <laughs> That's a flitter. Somebody stepped on a fritter? <laughs> <laughs> something, something like that. A flitter is a, a flitter is a rod that's got a thin pancake. Okay. Okay. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use a real thin pancake. Okay. Or uh, kind of like a hoe cake, if you know what a hoe cake yeah. is. Yeah, in France they call them crepes. <laughs> yeah. <but I'm> <laughs> <laughs> They're big friends, huh? And these guys are friends. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
that's that's all there is to straightening other than that straightening nose other than that you've got at least three per strip and 18 strips in the two piece two tip rod so you got 54 nodes to straighten i'll heat one while one cools in the vise as soon as, as soon as this gets hot i just gotta knock the jaws of that vise that one falls out I throw it over to the side and stick this one in there real quick um, Buy or make one of these, it'll save you a world of trouble with twisting rods. Other questions about straightening and flattening nodes. This is handy. Bend it over this thing here. Okay. Um, one of the things beginners ask a lot is how do you determine when it's hot enough to bend? And that's just a feel thing. You know? When it's smoking, you know, <laughs> you'll notice that I, this barely, barely began to get brown on the edges. If you keep some tension on it, you can kind of feel it. Yeah, and what I do is as I'm turning it over here, I just kind of... Yeah, and you can feel it. And I do it the same... You do a couple of them. Yeah. And usually when I'm teaching classes, what I do is I, I get one just right and I hand it to the students. I hear, this is what it feels like. I do not. I do not at this stage. <coughs> and uh, if you use an oven to heat treat and the MD heat treating fixtures, then those twists go away in the oven. Okay. And I know somebody that does sell those things. <laughs> um, I don't know. Um, now, once in a while, you'll get a big kink in here. And if I have a major kink that makes it hard to hold in the roughing form, I will take that out sometimes. 